So. What have we done? We, we, we unpacked the mouse and we marveled at all of the lovely 90s product offerings. Installed and the DOS in the boot manager. Yep. First boot. First boot. Ish. <laughs> feed BIOS, feed BIOS. This motherboard is also one of the only motherboards that's supported officially by the DOS. Oh? Mm -hmm. Which is why I purchased that one. So they're ones that work unofficially? Yes, but this is one of the ones that's listed. It's the chipset more, uh, more than anything. But unfortunately, the AL, the 440 AL, uh, has a bus, maximum bus speed of 66 megahertz. The BX, and I think they did a DX as well, they do 100 megahertz. So unfortunately, this PC is limited to 300 megahertz. Pension 3, uh, Pension 2, sorry. Um, and we've got a 266 and also a 450, but the 450 has a 100 megahertz bus and therefore it only shows up as 300 megahertz, but can't put that on. Okay, here we are. The BOS. The BOS. So this is called the desktop, magically enough. This over here is called uh, the desk bar. And then we have obviously the icons on the desktop. Now, this is kind of like the Windows 95 start menu, um, or the Apple menu on Mac OS. Um, and I've never liked it over there, so I tend to want to move it. And normally, I can't see it on this monitor. So the desktop in the BOS is called the tracker. So it tracks windows and the more windows that you have open. So you don't get millions of tabs across the desk bar. You actually get a menu, mm -hmm. which is very similar to Windows Vista. Windows Vista started doing that. Yeah. Um, and then you can close all or hide and you know those kind of things. Or just manage it. This is really cool because I haven't I was never really a BOS user. Um, but I did. Do you want a car? Ghostbusters! What? Oh, I don't see Ghostbusters in your contacts. Should I look for businesses with that name? <laughs> hey Siri, stop. <laughs> okay. Okay, so sorry about that. As I was saying, I was never a B the BOS user back in the day, um, but I did get to see it running on a an actual B machine at uh, Apple Expo '97 in London, in the London Olympia or something, and it was just really fun to play around with it. But that's the only uh, experience I've had with it until recently, when I decided to try installing Haiku in a virtual machine. Um, which we won't talk about. No. Ash, that high group. What do I want? Pulse, that's fine. <clears throat> so this is the CPU monitor, and it's showing you obviously what the CPU is doing. Yeah. This is the thing that um, on, a, on a B box would be the, the, the LEDs up the side. The blinking be, lights, that's yeah, what they were called. Would be going along with this. Yeah. Um, so the interesting thing about the BOS is these uh, window title bars, I guess what you call them, um, they're movable, you can move them. So at the moment they're fixed, but if you press shift, you can move them. Ooh. And I kind of like having windows on the right hand side, like that. And also if you have multiple windows open, if you want to stack them on top of each other, you could put that on there and move that there. And then if you move that one uh, there, was there some way of having it automatically do that, or was that a different OS that did that? I'm different sure. Different OS. Unfortunately, window management isn't one of BOS's strong points. Does it snap windows together? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. And also, the icon view is quite irritating. Um, 
So here we are in list view. Um, we can have mini icon view or icon view. But there isn't actually a way of arranging the icons. So you can move them around and then clean them up. But you can't, if you created a whole bunch of folders and you wanted to list them alphabetically, you can't do that. Can you do that in Classic Mac OS in System 7? Yes. So, but then no one really did that anyway. People used to, you would open your, I, I, anyway, you'd open my folders and then I'd arrange all my icons where I wanted them and uh, certainly in Classic Mac OS they would stay there. Yes. And um, so the next time you open a folder, they're, they're laid out exactly the way you left them. And uh, I think that kind of went away with Windows, that idea of, of doing that, because Windows would just chuck it wherever it felt like. Well, if we open the applications folder, <coughs> and we make the window this big, and we change it to icon view, so perhaps you want to arrange the icons to fill up this space. There isn't a way of doing it. Okay. So you've always got to... So I've got a slide Yes, it's not brilliant there. Um, one of the other things that not many people know about is you can actually change what the title bar looks like. Oh. And there's a hidden keyboard combo. Ooh. So we can make it Amiga. We can make it Mac OS 8. Ooh, look at that. So platinum. That's quite cheeky though, isn't it? That's, <laughs> this is part of the stock operating system yeah. and it's using the platinum like. Yeah, and then if we do once more, actually it's intellectual property, who cares? And then you've got Windows 95 98. Ooh. So I guess that was for kind of people that were from other platforms and wanted to make them feel a bit more at home. That's quite cool. Go back to the um, platinum one. So the keyboard shortcut is shift control and alt and you get this window decor uh, option in the menu because otherwise it's not there. So that just looks, I always loved that book. The just icon looks so is neat. That, that icon is a platinum icon, that icon is a platinum icon, but that one I don't believe existed in, in Mac OS. Mm. Right. One of the things that everybody looks at is uh, it's in the demo and it is GLT Now the graphics card in here isn't fantastic um, and I don't actually think it's doing any 3D acceleration at all because if we open up Pulse Whoa Ooh. <laughs> Yeah um, also if you notice that the colours aren't brilliant Yes, and it's very, it's all um, grainy. That's because the default screen resolution is 800 by 600, it's not in um, million of colours. Right. So we shall change that. Change the screen. Oh, it's 640 by 480. Set it to that, and we'll change the colour depth to this. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that looks much nicer. So you'll notice that this is actually spinning a little bit faster than it was. Yes. What? I don't know. <laughs> so it looks better though. It does. So the colours, there's no um, dithering or anything in the image. But the, um, the processor is pretty much pegged right now. The UI is still responding just fine. Yeah. So slow down a little there. One up, one up, over. So if you notice the teapot is about 20 frames a second and I can move this around. It drops down slightly, but as soon as I move it over, because it does smart, um, what do you call it? It does smart rendering behind the window. So at the moment, this isn't rendering all of the GL teapot behind here. It's only rendering what you can see. So does it go up really high if you just cover the whole teapot? It does. If you can't see it, it will render it really quickly. So also, if you <coughs> minimise that, let's say we have 40 or frames a second, and now we'll put that there. And hit him, well, we just hit 50 there. Oh, no. It's very odd. Anyway, let's open another 3 again. So um, another one was um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, flight. The 
this was some kind of aircraft shooty up game, but I could never actually figure out how you played it. So we're now at 12 frames a second. Uh, but the UI is still... Yeah, still responding. So we haven't got a CD in the CD player, but you can... That's still moving around quite nicely. At this point in the video, while playing with another 3D app, we realised there was no sound coming out of the machine, despite the sound card supposedly being supported. As I tested the Sound Blaster Live sound card before making this video, I knew it worked in BOS 5, so we did an upgrade in place. Whilst watching this time lapse of the upgrade, here are a few words from Jean Louis Gasset himself, which I mentioned in a previous episode. I've always been interested in IT, I think my, my dad. It really stems from him. He had an Atari 800 and he taught me how to do basic. Um, Whoa. We then had, uh, he used to bring his um, Mac SE back from work at the weekends yep. and we'd play with it and print stuff out on the laser printer. And yeah, so the, the interest really came from him. Yeah. So, what did he do in life? Uh, uh, he was in the military, he was in the, the Royal Air Force. Okay. So he was responsible for, um, he was a trainer on a surface-to-air missile system mm -hmm. and he uh, basically wrote the training manual so he needed a, um, a piece of software that he could, he could draw the training manuals and the screens that the, the recruits would see and, and, and what they would do and how they would use the system so that's where he got his first Mac from. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was usually how the Mac managed to get into organization against against the the dictates of, um, of higher ups uh, who you know wanted to to standardize on uh, on uh, dos and windows uh, but when it came to do to to do something with graphics and and printing and uh, and, and having uh, you know so, something people uh, could use more easily the, the Mac, the Mac got into the side door, uh, as, as it were. So, are you surprised, after all these years, that there is still such interest in the B, uh, BOS and B incorporated? And because uh, you mentioned that the, the file system is well, in in different, and it, it has a different life on the Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's the philosophy of the file system yeah. that's alive. I think we can, uh, we can say that. Uh, without exaggeration, well, I'm 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 a little surprised, um, <clears throat> uh, but I'm I'm happy. Uh, I think uh, I really do appreciate uh, the uh, you know the interest and uh, the other thing we we did well in, in BOS was the, the 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 bottom layer, you know what uh, what you would call the kernel, uh, the basic. The basic services uh, that, that really uh, that touch the hardware, and on that we we put together a application frameworks. Uh, Diane Hackborn uh, came to work at B, did a wonderful job putting the, the, the sort of scaffolding on which uh, developers could could put their code, uh, the, the API. The, uh, the, the, the frameworks and uh, guess what she's at uh, Google and she's doing the same uh, wow. and she's doing this the same work uh, yeah so so we, we have a bunch of uh, we have a bunch of uh, things we did at B that, that sort of uh, uh, continue to, to, to live to live in, uh, if not in Very fact uh, at least in spirit mm -hmm. um, so that 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 where that that so so you know I I understand that uh, that uh, you know some people can see uh, uh, this and uh, and uh, you know uh, praise what uh, what uh, the folks at uh, what we did. So um, I just wondered if you when you started B, did you always know that you were going to develop your own operating system, or did you look at alternatives like? Like what Next did, for example, they looked at the, the BSD kernel and yes. they built on top of that. Yeah, that, 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 that's a that's a good that's a very good question. At the time, 
because of the misadventures uh, of the Mac at Apple, when I came to Cupertino, I wanted to do what Lex did uh, much later, which was sort of lift the, the, the Mac OS and slide uh, a proper kernel under it. Because the Mac, as you know, was a hack. Yes. It was not an operating system. Everything was in, in super user mode on the 68,000. Every application, every, every instruction was, was able to, 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 to take full ownership of the, of the machine. And because of my past in, um, in the mini computer industry, I worked at uh, Data General, uh, among other things. I, I had some ideas about operating system. And so we looked for a kernel. So we uh, we looked at Hunter and Ready. There, there was a company doing a, a real-time kernel. The landscape that was out there was, was primarily Intel, but you went with PowerPC. Was that because of the Apple background, or did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was a that that was uh, you know that was a mistake, I think. That was a mistake. We we didn't like Intel. Um, so quickly then, so I, I'd just like to talk about the, the hardware compatibility on Intel. Um, well, the lack of hardware compatibility. Um, was there um, it, was there any particular reason why? Was it because you didn't have perhaps as many engineers to write the drivers for other hardware, or was it you, you just saw well, this is the optimum? hardware configuration that the BOS should run on? Yeah, we, we um, it, it was, it was a limitation. Uh, it was a limitation. We, uh, we were warned by a, one of our investors uh, uh, who happened to be a Microsoft director, uh, Dave Markward, that when we jumped to Intel, we would encounter uh, driver problems. Uh, he told me that at the time, Microsoft spent more money developing and supporting drivers than any other operating system development. Why? Anyway, so uh, we were warned. Um, and uh, we we didn't have uh, you know that that was that was a, a limitation. We didn't have the resources that Microsoft had to uh, develop writers uh, drivers.